breaking news here at 6 o'clock. We have learned a car has gone into a house. As you can see, that vehicle directly into the home. Holy shit. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Whew. We need to be careful, right? Okay. Oh my God. So I found this property back in January of 2022. So I was driving through Las Vegas in my camper van. And funny enough, I wasn't even looking for rental properties there, but I knew that I was sitting on some money that I wanted to invest. I didn't want it to just sit in a savings account. So I started looking and got really lucky and found three rental properties where the numbers made sense. So I jumped on it and this was one of the properties. And I was actually really excited about it because I got it for below market value and there was some potential there to like renovate it. I mean, of course I was nervous because it's a huge investment. I've never invested anything that cost so much before. Like it's a big move because nobody in my family owns rental property. Like nobody I know, none of my friends are doing this. At the time, like I felt really good about it. And I've always heard about other people successfully investing in rental property. And so I was finally like, now's my chance to stop hearing about other people doing it. Like it's my chance to finally do this for myself because sometimes it's like now or never, you know? I don't think you'll ever feel completely ready, but I had the money, the numbers made sense, and it was kind of like, there's no reason not to, even if you're nervous. So I pulled the trigger. I had a property manager in place, so it was really passive, and I also had insurance on it, so I thought, what could possibly go wrong, you know? I'll just sit back and collect rent checks forever, and for an entire year and a half, it was great. So I found out on a Monday afternoon, I was just having a great day with my friend and I check my phone and I see a text message from my tenant. And normally the tenants don't have my number, they just talk to the property manager, but for various reasons they had my number and they texted me that a car had crashed into their house, my house, and that they had nowhere to stay that day. I was like, oh my God, I, I, I don't even know how to react to this because I didn't know like what's gonna happen. Is this like, should I be panicking? It seems like I should probably start panicking. But you know, I was just trying to stay calm until I had more information. And so I called my property manager and he's just like, all right, just give me your insurance information so I can make a claim. And that made me feel a little better because it's like there's a step. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, thank God I have insurance, right? It's probably all gonna be okay because I have insurance. I felt really stressed, but I also know better than to just stress about things that I have no control over. It's like what happened happened. Now I'm just gonna try to stay calm and handle it. There were all these calls and emails and texts flying around between the property manager and me and the tenant and even the fire department and the police department called me and they told me that the people who crashed into the house, they couldn't figure out their insurance information or even who they were because they were unconscious. Luckily, this happened around like two in the afternoon and none of my tenants were in the kitchen when this happened. I mean, can you imagine? Like the two people that were driving the car, they're unconscious in the hospital and I guess we'll have to find out what happened to them, but they were seriously injured, but luckily none of my tenants were injured. As bad as this is, it honestly could have been a lot worse. The tenants had to move out because the house is deemed uninhabitable. All right, so it took out all the cabinets on this corner along with the wall. Oh my God, there's like leftover cake and everything in the fridge just came flying out. Everything is still on the floor. This place is a fucking shithole right now. The police officer said when they tried to like go to the second floor, they felt the whole second floor shaking, which is crazy. And they shut off the utilities. They boarded up the place because there was literally a huge hole in the house and people could enter and like steal everything. Considering how much of the wall is missing here, the car must have come in through here and taken down all the wall. And I'm imagining that all the rubble and rocks like collapsed on top of the car. So yeah, I think the car got pretty smushed by everything that fell on top of it. This is like a lot of material to just fucking disappear. Even this was taken out. Jesus Christ. I had to return the tenants their prorated rent for April, as well as their security deposit. And so it was just a mess and we're just piecing together the, the facts of what happened. My insurance company, they sent somebody out there to check out the damage and assess what it would cost to repair. And they've quoted that they're gonna 
give me about $100,000 to fix the repairs. And unfortunately, it's probably gonna cost more than that to repair. And so this is where I found out that I have this very rare, weird kind of insurance policy called an actual cash value policy versus a total replacement cost policy. Yeah, this is a horrible policy. And so basically this is what your policy says. We will pay for your house to be re rebuilt minus depreciation. This ACV policy will only cover the depreciated value of what was destroyed. So not the replacement value. So for example, the entire kitchen was destroyed. Instead of giving me $20,000 to replace the kitchen, the insurance is gonna pay me the $15,000 that this old kitchen is worth because it's old. So that was another kind of surprise that I really wasn't expecting. Um, and this is exactly like what I was afraid of. And then the other piece that I have recently figured out with my property manager is what it will actually cost to fix the house. He's been going out and getting bids for me from different construction companies. Some of them came in crazy high, like $400,000, ridiculous. But he basically found a good bid for me from a good company and it came out around $113,000. So as of now, it looks like my out-of-pocket cost is gonna be around $13,000. But then the X factor is maybe I can get that covered by the car insurance of the people who crashed my house. So there's a few missing pieces, but at least like the bulk of the cost is gonna be covered by insurance and that makes me feel a lot better. And the insurance company is also going to cover the loss of rent. So since I can't collect rent while the house is being repaired, they're gonna send me a check every month for what I was getting in rent. Um, so that will cover my mortgage and all the other expenses. There were several moments during this whole last very stressful two months where I was thinking like, maybe I should just stop trying to invest and do things that are like out of my league, essentially. Maybe I should just sit on money in a savings account and basically just stop trying so hard and taking risks. Maybe I'm just really out of my league and maybe I really fucked up and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And I should just like crawl back into my corner and hide. Um, so yeah, it was really stressful, um, but like now that now that now that I know what the damage is going to be, it's really it's I can manage it. Thirteen thousand dollars and nine months of construction to get the house back to normal. I would say if there's any sort of initiation into the world of property investing or just like taking risks, um, I've been initiated. But instead of you know thinking like why me, poor me, I've really just had to dig deeper and just be like, what is the learning in this? And yeah, over the next eight months, like looking on the bright side, I get to learn what it looks like to rebuild a kitchen and a bathroom from scratch. So I can learn a few things that will help me when potentially investing in other properties in the future. I also learned exactly what happens when a disaster strikes and you have to call your insurance company. Now I know like insurance is a real thing. They do step in to help. I also learned the difference between an ACV policy and a total replacement cost policy. I will never make that mistake again. So yeah, I'm just trying to look on the bright side here. And maximum one year from now, the property will be back on the rental market and I'll be sitting back collecting run checks just like before. I really didn't expect to start tearing up like that, but I think it's because I mainly show like a very confident image to the world. And I am confident. I'm not like faking that, but it's not like I have zero fears and doubts sometimes, but I, I think a perspective shift that helped me just hold this experience in a more positive way is if you're doing things that are a little bit out of your comfort zone, by definition, shit's gonna happen to you and you're gonna fuck up or life is gonna sometimes throw some curveballs at you. And it's really about how you handle it that is gonna really make the difference. One saving grace throughout all of this has really been my property manager. That's why it's so important, not only to have good insurance, number one, but also to have good people in your corner. Like my property manager is extremely experienced with construction, so he was able to get me a very competitive bid, which means my potential like out-of-pocket cost is gonna be a lot smaller. And he's gonna do a good job because I don't know about construction.
I mean, I'm gonna learn more in this process, but as of now, if I had to do this on my own, I would have been completely lost and probably completely screwed. So just to have good people in your corner to help you with the areas that you're not good in yourself, especially when it comes to property investing is so important. For a moment, I actually doubted whether I should even make a video about this. I really wanted to show like, you know, the reality. Like sure, maybe I could try to look good and not talk about this and just brag about how much money I make from my real estate investments. But this is the reality. I feel like that's important for people to really see. And this is all new to me too. And I just wanted to like take you guys along the journey and be a part of like my growth also. So I really hope that this doesn't scare you away from real estate investing, if that's something you have been interested in. And on the contrary, that it empowers you to do it because you see that even in like the worst case scenario, it's still going to be OK. So, yeah, I look forward to showing you the progression of how the house turns out. I'll keep you updated on the renovations and I'll take you along the journey of like getting this house back to normal and rent it out again and we'll go over all the numbers again there then too. I hope you will stay tuned for other videos in this series and that's it. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. This is nuts. Like you can even see the eggs cracked on the floor. Whoa, you can see the bathroom from here. This is where the shower was. <laughs>